hello everybody and um, glad to be here with you talking through the manpower puzzle how Delmia uh, helped solve this, uh, our staffing challenge at Southwest Airlines. So without further ado, I'll kind of jump into the presentation and start talking to you, all of you about how Southwest Airlines uh, kind of a journey through how we started even exploring what workforce planning was and how we landed with Quintic and how, what we've since been from, uh, what we've since done with Quintic. And then take that a little step further of how that's helping in this current crisis that we're in with the COVID-19 pandemic. So before we get too far along, I'd like to just take a brief moment to just talk through the numbers of just how Quintic is being leveraged in the scale of which the software is optimizing our headcount. And so Southwest Airlines in 2019, we operated about 4,000 flights a day. We served over 100 airports and about 175 million passengers annually. Uh, we are actually the largest domestic carrier in the United States. And for a period of time with this COVID crisis, uh, we were end ended up being the largest airline in the world uh, with the way we were still flying many of our trips. With the uh, one out of every three customers in the US will actually get on a Southwest jet today. And uh, so we are a very big airline. We're one of the four major airlines in the United States. Um, and we have a very big workforce that is heavily unionized and we don't outsource a lot of our work and a lot of it is done internally. And so as you can see, we do have a large breadth of employees in which that the Quintec tool is being utilized for headcount planning. And so we are optimizing for over 10,000 ramp agents and those are the folks that are below the wing, they're stacking bags and uh, taking your carry-ons and cargo and freight uh, and loading them on the aircraft. Those are the ones you like to wave out of the window. And then the uh, 4,500 customer service agents are award-winning, warrior spirit, uh, servant's heart, fun-loving attitude, CSAs. Uh, they're the ones that are up in the gate areas, uh, making announcements, clearing, uh, clearing standby passengers, uh, offering upgraded boarding, and, uh, and continue to offer that legendary hospitality that we've come to be known by. And then we also have our 2,200 operations agents or ops agents and those are the folks that are actually boarding the flights and doing the weight and balance. So when you go up and you get your boarding pass scan to board the aircraft, uh, that's those folks that are doing that work. And then finally, it's, uh, we have our provisioning agents, and those are the folks that are putting those snacks that you uh, eat out there uh, on board the aircraft, as well as our uh, drinks on board to each of our aircraft in our 22 locations that we have provisioning in to restock our aircraft. So uh, as you can see, very big airline, very big. Uh, employee base that we are trying to figure out how to staff an airline for with a very unique flight schedule. So this is where the story turns to uh, really a story of where we were, where we're at, and where we're going. And um, when we really look through how optimization was done in, in the past, it really takes us back to the story of in 2013 and prior, we had over 21,000 employees that we were doing everything with headcount planning on. And when you think about an airline and optimizing headcount and doing workforce planning, it's one of the most complex planning that you can do uh, in the workforce planning space because there's so many different variables on how you can staff. So you have to combat really these five key areas, but there's a lot of underlying uh, demand under that. And so you have to start thinking through schedule complexity. At, at Southwest Airlines, uh, we're very unique in the airline industry where we re-optimize and what we call green sheet optimize every single base schedule. And so uh, you probably see that when you fly Southwest versus other airlines. Uh, if you fly another airline, one of our competitors, oftentimes it doesn't matter if you fly them in July, it doesn't matter if you fly them in September, Generally speaking, there'll be a 6 a.m. flight to Atlanta or a 6 a.m. flight to Chicago. And that 6 a.m. flight or around that 6 a.m. time frame, that flight will always exist. Um, and that's because most other airlines have a what they call a singular base schedule, and then they only add seasonality of about 20% of their fleet on top of that. At Southwest Airlines, we optimize every flight schedule every single month on what we think the demand will be. And so that's why if you book a flight on Southwest this month, you might notice that that flight to Chicago is at 6 a.m. in the morning, but next month it's not until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, or it may not exist to Chicago with a nonstop. And that's because we are truly optimizing our schedule to when, when the customers want to fly and where they want to fly by month. 
which is an incredible model to operate under uh, when it comes to revenue and driving customer demand. Uh, but it also adds an extreme amount of complexity for staffing because you could have a very variable operation with variable demands of when you need to have people. And I mentioned before, we have all of our own people who don't move as flexible as a flight schedule does. The second area that you have to accommodate for uh, is a labor contract. So we're one of the most unionized airlines in the world, and we're a little, uh, almost 90% of our workforce is under some type of, uh, some type of labor contract. And so they are very restrictive. They have certain, uh, there are certain roles you can have on part-time employees and utilization of employees and all of that. So you have to be able to accommodate that. And then of course, like any good business, uh, we have productivity targets we want to hit to make sure that we're low cost, which means with our low cost, we can offer low fares. And so, of course, there's certain productivity metrics that we monitor and want to try to abide by. And then, of course, the facility consideration is a big one. And so one of the things we always talk about at Southwest is if you've been to one airport, you've seen one airport. Um, you know, in a lot of different businesses and industries, they design their stores or their footprint to be exactly the same. And so think about your electronic store where in the back you might have your TVs and in the left you might have your computers. But generally speaking, no matter what store you go in, no matter what city it is, the setup of the store inside is exactly the same. That is not true in the airline business. Every airport's a little different. And uh, for those of you out there that have traveled extensively, you'll know when you land in Denver to get to the baggage claim area is a 25 minute walk in a train. Whereas in Midland, Texas, that is a five minute walk and it's a no train and you can see baggage claim when you get off the airplane. So you can be able to accommodate all those different facility uh, considerations. And then finally, there's demand under that. And so you think about in certain airports where it's a business market, the demand of the bags isn't gonna be as prevalent as in a leisure destination. A lot more customers check bags in Orlando than they do in LaGuardia. And so you have to be able to accommodate that with your staffing plan. So when you think back of all the complexity with that and how Southwest was doing it in 2013 and prior, we were doing all that in Microsoft Excel. And so as you can imagine, it's incredibly complex staffing models, um, really built with macros. And I tell all my Quintic friends that prior to 2013, I would go to bed at night and I would just pray that none of our macros would break the next morning for a $2 billion budget. And so, uh, so really we were managing it all through a bunch of Excel tables and models built there that were linked to each other. And that's how we were doing it. So with optimization being non-existent back then, we also had a very antiquated process. And so our process back then was, because we were in Excel was, is we sent out a blank template to all of our leaders in the field. So essentially we would have and a blank Excel template, it would go to the Pittsburgh station manager and say, tell me what you want your headcount to be on this schedule. They would fill that out, they would send that back to headquarters, and then we would do what we called a director review. That director review was done with a bunch of different folks in a room, thinking through each station and questioning, yeah, I think they need that, I don't think they need that. A very laborious process. So one of the things we noticed really quickly with the issue with that is, hey, locations generally control their own headcount app. And so you had a lot of disparate headcount models out there. What you had staffing in one city may not have been the same in another city, even though they may have had very similar characteristics. As mentioned, that's exactly what you saw. You saw where Oakland might have 100 heads for 150 flights a day, where Atlanta with 150 flights a day might have you know, 50 heads for this one uh, position. And so we wanted to know we had to get our arms around that. We also had no challenge mechanism based on data. And so largely our challenges back of, no, you don't need those heads, or yes, we do want to invest in those head count and that head count. Um, a lot of the problem you end up having was you didn't have a lot of data to go off of. And so you often made bad decisions because with lack of data, you just made a decision on, nope, uh, we shouldn't allow that, or yes, we should. And so that just led to a lot of uh, the back and forth of should they get it or should they not get their head count that they're asking for. We also couldn't do a lot of scenario analysis. Uh, so we couldn't see like, hey, is this, if we operate this flight schedule, it is it more beneficial to operate this flight schedule or this one from a cost perspective? And so uh, th that was very difficult to do because we were, we would ask our station managers to do that multiple times, which really isn't feasible. 
So when did we come up with the idea of, hey, maybe we want to go to build an optimizer? So this is actually a picture of a terminal. And, um, and this was actually the Houston terminal. And so we were looking at building it. That white building on the bottom of that picture is the brand new terminal that we built in Houston Hobby. And so we were sitting in a room and we were having a discussion about uh, our bag room, which is where all the bags go to after you check them in at the ticket counter. And so we were having this discussion about, hey, I think they need 32 employees to work in there. And there was a bunch of arguments back and forth of, no, I think it's 15. And so we really started asking ourselves the question of, why don't we just model the demand? If we could find a way to model the demand of what the bag coming to that was, we could get a standard and figure out what baseline coverage is and then only validate the variable needs. So in other words, if the station was saying they needed 32 heads to go run their key point, uh, which is what we call our bag room, and, uh, and we're saying, hey, through data, we can validate 30. Really, the question is, is what do you need the extra two heads for? Where before the, all this modeling and demand-based models and staffing standards and optimization came, we would question all 32, and we would land somewhere in the middle, which may have been too many or too little. We really didn't have a good way to do that. So we really knew we needed a solution to fix this problem. And we knew it needed to be a technical solution because the airline was growing at a very fast pace. And we were in the middle of a merger with another airline. And so we knew right away, we're big at Southwest on getting really good requirements before we start approaching potential vendors. And so we knew that, uh, we knew that the first requirement that we needed was what we called a task model. So we knew that, hey, even though we have all these employees out there and we have 4,500 customer service agents, there's a lot of tasks those customer service agents do. And so we need to be able to accommodate all those tasks so that we make sure we adequately cover the operation. So we knew we needed a model uh, and a tool that could literally take at a task level each activity for each position in each work group and be able to optimize off that and account for that. We also knew that, hey, we need to be able to spit out a way to, uh, with our labor shift requirements of our union contract, be able to accommodate those. So, for example, we knew that we have restrictions in our contract where if you're a part-time employee, we have to have certain numbers of shifts off with weekends uh, versus AM shifts versus PM shifts, all these unique work roles. And so we just couldn't throw out an optimizer that would optimize headcount and not take those into account. So we knew we needed to get down to a shift bid level to be able to accommodate those types of union roles in order to be able to make sure that the model was accurate and that we had an accurate depiction of our headcount. And then, of course, as discussed before, all components of a flight schedule, including passengers, bags, flights, all those drivers of headcount, it needed to be able to accommodate. And so um, this was probably the most laborious process of figuring out what all of those demand points and what are all of those data points that we would need to incorporate into a model. But we knew that the model would have to incorporate all of those because each position is unique in the fact that some positions are driven by passengers, some positions are driven by the number of bags, some positions, it doesn't matter if there's one passenger or 100 passengers on an airplane, I need somebody to be there. And so that's generally what we knew we needed on the, the scheduling requirements. And then finally, because of our facilities and the way they're different in every airport, we knew we couldn't have a broad strike approach when it came to optimization. We knew we couldn't build one staffing model and apply that to all 100 cities. We knew we needed to have a tool that was highly configurable in a ton of different ways, so that way we could really optimize for every unique situation in every unique airport. And so we knew we needed a tool where I could optimize a key point in Pittsburgh different than a key point in Oakland, which again is that bag room where your bags go to after you check them in. Because the setup, one airport might have carousels, another airport might have just a flat belt where bags just go to and, and ramp agents pick them up off the ground. And so we knew we needed a tool that was highly configurable without having to do a lot of change requests with technology. So these are the high level, like, hey, when we start evaluating vendors, this is what we need to look for. So that's when we started really evaluating a million different vendors on who all offered some level of optimization of headcount. And I'll tell you, this is how we fell in love with Quintix. Really, what we fell in love with first was their ability to consume tremendous amounts of standards that are highly configurable. And so you guys all saw earlier in the presentation.
tell you was, is in those five different work groups, there's over 150 subsets of roles in those work groups. So in other words, in that customer service agent, there's 4,400 of them, but some of them work at the gate, some of them work at your ticket counter, some of them work in our baggage service office, some of them work in different areas of other parts of the airport. And so there's 150 different of those positions under that. And so we knew that their ability to be able to uh, be able to consume all those unique standards underneath each individual work group and make them highly configurable was the ability in Quintic that we fell in love with right away. Then on top of that, we also know just like any business, it doesn't matter if you're in the airline business or some other industry, it doesn't matter. You have to be able to change on a fly in order to adjust to what your customers needs are, to what are the ongoing problems in the local economy are, even down to what we're going to talk about here in a minute of even during a current crisis like COVID-19. And so we knew we needed to be able to change the underlying data points and standards that is optimizing off of quickly without a ton of intervention with technology or anybody else. We wanted the user to be able to do that so we can adjust on the fly. Quintech had that ability, so we really liked that. We also knew that, hey, we can have a ton of analysts at headquarters go ahead and optimize and plan headcount and be really, like I like to call, techie. Um, that's not a problem. Our problem is, is that anytime you deal with staffing numbers, doesn't matter what industry or business that you're in, it's one of the most passionate items and one of the most debated items you're going to have with your customers, which are your local leaders. And so we had, knew we had to be able to not only take these really complex models, but we knew we had to be able to take those models and put it in a very, in a very simplistic view so our operators who are actually going to use these models and these bids and, and we're going to have to deliver these headcount plans too, we'll be able to understand them and be able to understand what we're saying and what we're seeing in a very simplistic format. And so we love the configurability and the ability to show different dashboards and modify dashboards based on the user that we're, that we're talking through and being able to visually show them the demand and the shifts that are on top of that demand. So we knew we fell in love with that right away, that it's all very complex on the background for our analysts, but was able to simplify it down for our local leaders to be able to understand. As we talked about, we are an airline that is driven by metrics. We love them. We continue to push the business towards metrics. And that is solely so we can ensure that headcounts are one of our largest costs at an airline. And so we wanted to make sure we had very customizable dashboard views with different productivity metrics that were our productivity metrics. They weren't some off the shelf canned solution of some off the shelf product that gave us their productivity metrics. We wanted our own productivity metrics. And so we had the ability to go ahead and design that into the Quintic model and be able to customize those dashboard views for not only our analysts, but for our users as well. And then finally, Honestly, what took it over the hump is the relationship of the leadership team and the developers of Quintic. There has been no better partnership that we've had with our vendors than what we've had with Quintic. Uh, they are constantly are offering to help us uh, figure out a different model. Uh, they're constantly being able to show us uh, through different value scan activities that we've done with them. Uh, yeah, if we make this small tweak to the model, it will actually improve your output. And we've actually incorporated a lot of the feedback from their developers and from their leadership team into our planning process, which has been a tremendous uh, partnership that I would say is unmatched at anything we've done with workforce planning uh, and definitely in my tenure in this business. So after we got through the selection, we put it in action. And we knew that in, in putting it in action for the first time was going to be a thing, right? And so you're incorporating a new uh, model, you're incorporating new staffing demand, new new change management in the field, new views. We knew all of that would exist. And so we put it in place with, uh, the first time we put it in place was with our Denver expansion. So we were growing the Denver airport pretty rapidly with flight schedules. We were doing a lot of facilities projects and construction. And so what you'll see on the left is, is, uh, is that's really what the model was showing of what we end up incorporating into Quintic. So if you've had Quintic today in the staff planning model and the workforce planning model, uh, you'll know that the green represents the demand, the red represents the shift that I'm laying on top of that, and the actual supply of our employees. So this represents what, what we talked about before, our key point in Denver. So again, that's the area where our bags go to after you check them in at the counter, a ticket counter. And so the green represents the demand in Denver, the red represents how we're covering that demand. And so you'll see the very first benefit we saw was just-in-time staffing to meet demand. So we were able to show our, employee, uh, show our uh, customer, which is our station leaders, 
and the folks that are planning the actual uh, shift in the station, we were to show them like, hey, this is when you want to start employees coming in for the day. And you'll see that, hey, I'm having them start before that big peak comes. And so that way we're able to meet that peak and be able to uh, have ensure that we have the people in the right people in the right places at the right time. You also see that, hey, in order to save on money, we, it looks like we can reduce in the middle of the day. So prior to this, with those Excel templates I was telling you about earlier in the presentation, we would what we call flatline headcount. We would start a big shift at seven o'clock in the morning and we would run full staffing for the entire day. By being able to see this demand and forecast this demand, we actually can say, oh, I can have a big shift that needs to be there for that middle part, uh, for that earlier part of the day. But in the middle of the day, the demand kind of falls off. And so I tell you what, we'll bring staffing down to meet that demand, which obviously saves our, saves our cost and our footprint, and it makes us more productive. And then finally, everybody knows that flies on an airline that if you fly in the morning, because you're just getting started, generally speaking, the airline runs more on time in the morning than it does in the PM. And it's that domino effect, right? It's, it's hey, if the morning's getting started out right, you're good, but by the time you have three or four trips on that flight in there, uh, if there's one 30 minute delay, it cascades where the delays are a little bit worse in the evening than they are in the AM. We know that. And so now we can model through that and say, I'm gonna put a little excess demand in the PM, and that's what you're seeing there, to protect against any irregularities. So we have the ability to forecast out and say, hey, I forecast in this flight schedule that the eight o'clock hour in the PM, we're probably gonna have uh, some uh, excess problems with flight delays. So let's put a little extra coverage there and we can do that in a very smart and prescriptive way. And so we had that ability because we pulled down the middle of the day to extend those shifts to later in the day to ensure that we actually have people in the right spots when we need them to be there. I think everyone can relate to that time of flying on an airline when it's like, oh, it, it, there's all these delays and why don't they have enough people there? Well, it's because we were planning on the actual flight schedule. Now we're able to plan and say, I'm going to shift some of that supply of shifts and employees to later in the day. And so we're meeting that problem of if we do have delays, we have enough people to meet that so you don't see the long lines that we've seen in the past. Um, so that was the first time we put it into effect in Denver, and it's been a, a great success. So 2019 happened. And so what we really started thinking through in 2019 is uh, everybody has seen the press in 19 that most people have forgotten because of COVID-19, but the MAX, the 737 MAX was grounded March of last year. And uh, you could see that every month we kept delaying the rollout of the MAX and the situation has rolled and continued to roll out where we do not have the MAX flying even today. And so, uh, obviously, with us being the largest operator of the 737 MAX, uh, we have over 100 of those in storage right now. Um, that is a significant impact on not only our, our plan for uh, financial prosperity with profitability and margin, uh, but it also has a lot of pressure on you still got to hire to fly them when they come back. And so, uh, we are happy to say that normal years, we optimize, uh, we optimize headcount about six to eight times a year. Uh, within those months that sched the flight schedules change. In 2019, we optimized and ran scenarios of over 20 to 30 different times because of the max grounding. And so we would optimize and run those scenarios that we talked about earlier that we couldn't do previous, and we would par pair up with our network planning folks to give them feedback on, hey, this scenario is better for us from a headcount perspective to lower our operating costs. That was only made possible by having the Quintic toll to be able to optimize those scenarios and provide feedback of how we can ensure that we're profitable in 2019. And you will see in the press release that even though one seventh of our fleet was grounded throughout the, all of last year, we had a 47th year of consecutive year of profitability uh, by continuing by leveraging that Quintix toll. So uh, it was a very challenging year in 2019 with optimizing multiple headcount uh, scenarios, multiple flight schedule scenarios, and trying to figure out how to get cost down. And then 2019 said, or 2020 said, hold my beer 2019. <laughs> and so uh, we wanted to just talk through how Quintic has really been leveraged, even in some recent press releases, how Quintic has actually been directly involved with the success of uh, what we've tried to do in a time where it has just decimated our financials and has been truly breathtaking as our CEO has communicated. And so we've been able to leverage Quintech multiple times. So you saw on the slide before that we have optimized headcount 20 to 30 times last year. 
We have optimized headcount 20 to 30 times in the past six weeks with the COVID-19 crisis. And so we continue to leverage the Quintech tool uh, to ensure that we can better meet the demand uh, of our flight schedules. And we're ab able to see how many folks we can, uh, we can actually ensure that we can give uh, volunteer unpaid time off for, some programs we have out there for folks to take time off throughout this crisis. And even instituting optimization on new roles and tasks that we never imagined would happen. And so when we when we originally acquired uh, when we originally got the Quintic tool into our toolkit, uh, we never really had a use case on hey if we have a new requirement of a role. So we thought hey there's going to be ticket counter agents, there's going to be gate agents, so we need to optimize for that. We never really thought through of instituting something very quickly of a new role. And so you'll see through some of the uh, press releases and announcements that we've made of the Southwest Promise, which is ensuring that we clean uh, aircraft on every single turn. And so that requires labor and that requires headcount to go and clean on every single turn. We have leveraged the Quintet workforce planning software to actually optimize a brand new labor requirement, which is these turn cleans. And we have leveraged the Quintet tool to be able to ensure that to provide peace of mind to our customers, we have our employees in the right places at the right time to go ahead and clean those aircraft on every single flight to ensure that we were meeting our Southwest promise that we communicated to our customers here a few weeks ago. And so even with the current crisis, we are still leveraging Quintic in ways that we didn't think possible when we actually went in, uh, in 2013 and says, we have these problems, here's our high level requirements. So it has been a, a large success in leveraging the Quintic tool to help get us through the worst aviation crisis uh, in the history of aviation, and it's the current COVID-19 crisis. So that leads us to Southwest and where we think we're going next uh, with using optimization. And so earlier this year, we partnered with Quintech to get a lot more analytics and data and quick wins out of the existing Quintech poll. And so we were successful in launching that right before the COVID crisis, and where we have a lot better data coming out of Quintech uh, that allows us to do a lot of analysis on how can we get smarter about using our, our workforce and adjusting staffing standards uh, to everything of we're able to uh, we're able to optimize our vendors so our wheelchair vendors uh, that push wheelchairs in all of our airports uh, different items like that that we can go optimize and plan hours and headcount for even our vendor contracts uh, that's something we did in early 2020 uh, in, in really in February January and February that we are still employing today and launching and still rolling out we speak today. And then where we see ourselves going in the future, we are looking at doing gate optimization in 2021. And so if we can leverage where uh, we can plan our planes to arrive on gates that can put our customers closest to gate. Um, so use the example of you have a plane going from Houston to Baltimore and 20 passengers are coming off that Baltimore flight uh, or coming off that uh, inbound flight and they need to connect to go to Amarillo. Um, we could easily make sure that we have optimization to put those gates next to each other to allow customers not to walk so far um, in the past, which also helps out our staffing as well. It ensures that we're not driving all over the airport with bags that need to connect. So uh, we are looking at doing a gate optimization to pair up with our staffing models um, next year. And then in addition, what we really see the advantage that we're building out plans on now is, is real-time task management. And that's where we're able to take these staffing plans and headcount plans and get down to where we can have our employees move to where the work is at. And so in other words, right now, instead of having a plane go and meet a bunch of employees standing on a gate, we can go have those employees meet the, that plane on any gate. So we can ensure that our customers have their employees with them or have our employees available for them whenever we need them to be and we're not out of position for when regular operations occur or when we a customer needs our customer service warrior spirit um, we're there to meet those demands in a real-time way so that is really our future of where we're moving to and in in designing our infrastructure of workforce planning to go so with that that is uh, the story of southwest airlines and how we've leveraged the delmia quintic partnership uh which i will again just reiterate has been a fantastic partnership has could not be better uh and we really enjoy the partnership we have with them the toll we have nothing negative to say about the toll it has been nothing honestly but uh but success after success and still realizing value well above what the original business case 
uh, we had put together on the toll is and continue to leverage the toll to make us more efficient, more productive, uh, and ensuring that we maintain our low cost profile that Southwest has come to know, uh, been known for. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for their time and uh, enjoy the rest of the presentation.